Praise the Lord, everybody. Let me try it one more time. Praise the Lord, everybody. It's good to see you this morning. Now, listen, Sundays like this are phenomenal because today we're going to dedicate babies to the Lord. Can you help me praise God for that? So, so I just want to, I just want to just share a little bit about the history of Faithful Central Bible Church. So here at Faithful Central, uh, we do not, um, what's up, man? We do not, um, dedic- we do not baptize babies. One of the reasons why we do not baptize babies is because we believe that a child should make that decision on their own. They should grow to an age or a stage where they can make that decision on their own. So we are, we are dedicating babies unto the Lord. If you read, by, if you read scripture, scripture will reveal to us that at least two times we have seen uh, babies dedicated in the word of God. In the Old Testament, we see Samson getting, getting uh, dedicated. And also in the New Testament, we see Jesus getting dedicated. For me, for us here at Faithful Central, first of all, on behalf of the entire church, I want to say thank you for trusting us and dedicating your babies to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Second thing I want to acknowledge is in the, in the time that we're living in today, for y'all to make the decision to dedicate your baby to Jesus Christ, the Lord, you got to help me praise God twice. This is a declaration that is saying that I want to make sure that as my child grows to be everything that God has called them to be, the gifts, the talents, and everything that has been poured into them, but I want them to represent God, and I want God's hand on them, and that is a remarkable thing to do. So you as as parents and the village, God bless you, and thank you for making this decision today. That's a good reason you go ahead and praise God. I want to share a few scriptures with you. Uh, One in the Psalms and another in Proverbs. So Psalm 127 and 3 says this. Children are a heritage from the Lord, an offspring, a reward from him. Scripture is revealing to us that our children, our babies are gifts from God. Amen. So anytime God blesses us with a child, we should be grateful and we should always acknowledge that it is a gift from God. But the word of God also says it is a heritage. Today before us, you are holding your heritage, you're holding a legacy. That is a big deal. You're holding, that is legacy in your hand. That is legacy in your arms. That is legacy. God bless you. Hi, how are you? Hi. She, isn't she beautiful? Help me praise God one time, y'all. Script. Come on, just look. Hey, I'm about to start preaching. Sometimes, If nobody else claps, you got to encourage yourself. Come on. Scripture also reveals to us that we should also train a child in the way that it should go. So Proverbs 27 and 6, 22 and 6, I'm sorry, says, train a child in the way that they should go, and when they get older, they will not depart from it. When Scripture says this to us, it is not a promise. I want to make sure that's clear. It's not a promise. It, It is wisdom literature, which says, that the environment and the ways in which I place my child to grow and the things that I place in them is wisdom that when they get older, they won't depart from me. In other words, the word of God never returns void. And so it makes a huge difference. And, and psychologists and therapists will tell you this. What our children experience from the moment they're born during their adolescence to the most important years of their life. And you're choosing right now to give them the favor, the blessings, and the hand of God to nourish them in an environment of God's word and the kingdom of God. And that is amazing. It is amazing. So we should always train our children up in the ways of God. Should always. Now, I'm going to give you this for free. I'm not perfect. We're not, we're not asking for, per, for per, per, uh, uh, perfection from our child. But we are expecting them to walk knowing that God's hand, his grace, his favor, his love, and his mercy should rest upon them as they grow to be who God's called them to be. Amen? Amen. 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 There there are a few things I want to do. Uh, First, I want to let the parents know it is your duty and responsibility as a parent to raise your child. 
There are going to be seasons where this may feel easy. There are going to be seasons where you may feel the, the weight of being a parent. But God has blessed you with a village that's beside you. Are there any, any, any uh, grandparents here? Praise God. Grandparents here. Any, any, praise God for the grandparents. Are, are, there, are there any godparents here? Amen. God, God bless you. I see, I see you. I see you. Amen. 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 But as a parent, it is your duty, it is your responsibility to raise your child in the ways of God. And so if you could just repeat this after me, I will raise my child in the ways of God. Amen. Amen. Now, I want you to help me, help me with this. Parents, it is very important what is spoken over our children. Because they need to know who they are. And it is out, your duty, my duty as a parent, to pour into them. Amen? So I want you, if you can, parents, can you whisper the full name of your child into their ears? Amen. 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 This, this is a symbol of identity that you will always, as parents, pour into them, tell them who they can be. Because they need to know who they are and whose they are because the world will be telling them who they cannot be. And as parents, we need to pour into them so they know who they are. Amen? Amen. We we'll learn today that as they grow, the enemy's goal will be, will be to build strongholds in their mind, lies in their mind. So it's very important as parents that you would pour into them, speak into them life so that they know they can be all things through Christ who strengthens them. Amen? Amen. 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 Um, God parents, God parents, where are you? I see a God parent over here. Come now. I want to speak to you specifically because I believe that you are here because they need you. I believe you're here, not for the pictures or the stage, but because there are going to be moments in time where your God baby needs you. And so, will you declare with me, I will? stand with my God child I will be there for them support her so she can be everything God has called her to be amen God bless you God bless you grandparents wave at me one more time grandparents okay grandparents now God has given you did you say great great One, two, three, four generations. Lord, y'all better help me praise God. So grandparents, you're witnessing your legacy, your heritage, another generation. And now more than ever, your children need your wisdom. Now as, as, as grandparents, we have to pray when to speak and when not to speak. Sometimes the greatest thing a grandmother or grandfather can do is pray. And so there are going to be moments in their life where they're going to need your wisdom. And so, and they're going to need your support. So could you repeat after me? I will support my child and grandchild and great grandchild so that they can grow to be everything that God has called them to be. You have my support. I'll pray for you and stand with you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come and praise God, family. Now, I, 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 don't, I have a prayer for you, but I also have a gift for you. Now, this, this Bible, it, it has a few things. On the first thing it has, it's an inscribed Bible, personalized just for each child that's here. Now, in this Bible, it shows the date of the baby dedication. And if you turn the first page, there's a personal note from me. It says, may the word of God transform your life. That's my prayer for you today. So this is, this is, this is your Bible. And I want to, to
to pray God's blessing over you. Can I do that? Yes. Family, meet Rhea Joyce Chapman. <laughs> Rhea. I pray that God's hand will cover you and protect you. I pray that God will use every gift that he has placed in you. And I pray that you'll grow to be everything that God has called you to be. I also pray that you would be a blessing to others as God blesses you. I pray right now that as we dedicate you to the Lord, that God keeps his hand on you, his favor, his love, his grace, his mercy, would cover you all the days of your life. We say this prayer in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, amen. Help me praise God, y'all. Family, meet Kai Johnson. Oh, look at this, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Kai, this is, your, this is your Bible. I'm gonna give this to your dad. Is that all right? <laughs> Kai, today we dedicate you to the Lord. And I pray that his hand will cover you and protect you. I pray that God will use every gift that he has placed in you for his maximum glory. I pray that the joy that I see on your face today would remind us that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And I pray that as God blesses you, you will be a blessing to many others. And I pray that everywhere you go, the grace of God, the love of God, the favor of God, the mercy of God would follow you all the days of your life. I say this prayer in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Family, meet Jonah Benjamin Wilson. How you doing, Jonah? This is, this is your Bible. This is, this is for Jonah. That's a biblical name. You got the cross and the doves on, y'all. Jonah, today we dedicate you to the Lord. We pray that God's hand would cover and protect you. We pray that every gift God has placed in you will be used to his maximum glory. We pray that as God blesses you, that you would be a blessing to others. And we pray that in each season of your life, that the favor of God, the love of God, the mercy of God, and the grace of God would follow you all the days of your life. We say this prayer in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. How are you doing? Zoe. Zoe Ty Zachary. Family, please meet Zoe Ty Zachary. This, this is your Bible. Zoe. Today, we dedicate you to the Lord. We pray that God's hand will cover you and protect you. We pray that God would use every gift that he's placed in you to his maximum glory. We also pray that as God blesses you, that you would be a blessing to many others. We pray today that every season of your life, God's love, God's favor, God's mercy, God's grace would follow you all the days of your life so that you can be and do everything that he has called you to be. We say this prayer in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you. Family, help me, help me praise God for every family represented here today, y'all. Now, I'm going to ask Dr. Terry if you don't know Dr. Terry by now, you need to know Dr. Terry. 
our, our children's ministry, we, our prayer, prayer here at Faithful Central Bible Church is that this would be a place that your family could thrive. Dr. Terry has been our children's pastor for years. Now, I'm going to tell you this now. I, I, I leave my kids with Dr. Terry. Dr. Terry is incredible. She's remarkable. Amen. I mean, I, I can go on until Jesus comes back about how good Dr. Terry is. But I'm going to ask that she would pray a blessing on the entire families as we, as we close. Amen. in my hello how are you come on y'all <laughs> fam can you meet Michael Dwayne Watkins the third come on fam <laughs> hello Michael today <laughs> Today, we dedicate you to the Lord. I pray that God's hand would cover you and protect you. I pray that God would use every gift that he's placed in you to his maximum glory. I pray that as God blesses you, that you will be a blessing to many others. I also pray that in every season of your life, God's love, God's favor, God's mercy and grace would follow you all the days of your life. May God use you and may the world be blessed because he did. We say this prayer in the mighty name of Jesus, in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Help me praise God, y'all. This is a personal Bible with, with, with uh, Michael's name on it. Hold on. Baby Dedication Date, Faithful Central Bible Church, Pastor John Paul C. Foster, April 14, 2024. Baby Dedication. Slip the page. This is a personal note to Michael. May the word of God transform your life. Amen. Amen. This is for your son, man. God bless you. God bless you. Dr. Terry. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for these families, Heavenly Father. We thank you for the parents coming and bringing them for baby dedication, O oh Lord. We pray, Heavenly Father, that your hand would be upon each and every one of them, O oh God. As the children walk before you, Heavenly Father, we pray that every step they make, every move they make, Lord, that you would walk with them, Lord, so that they might be guided toward accepting you as their personal Lord and Savior, God. We thank you for the village, for the parents, the godparents, grandparents, everyone who is supporting them, oh God. And we pray that us as a church, Lord, that we will walk up right before them so that they might know you better, oh Lord. We thank you. We love you. We honor you. And we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, y'all, you, if you can just follow uh, the team this way. Anybody come to worship God this morning? Try one more time. Any, anybody come to worship the Lord this morning? I see you. I got one worshiper over here. I got another worshiper over there. I see another worshiper over here. I see a few worshipers over there. Is anybody come to give God glory and give God praise today? Can we worship the Lord? Can somebody say hallelujah? I heard that's the highest praise. Hallelujah. I got, I got. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we magnify you. God, we owe you all the praise. As we think about all you've done, God, we've come to lift you high in this place. Are there any worshipers in the room? Anybody come with a praise already on your lips? Anybody come thinking about what God has already done for you and wanting to give him the praise that is due his name? Oh, hallelujah. Anybody come thinking like, you know what? I kind of owe God a praise because he's been just that good to me. Oh, hallelujah. Come on and just bless your hands in this place. Clap your hands in this place and bless our God who is worthy. Come on, team, and cry out.
hallelujah. And then he worshipers in the room. I will bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. And all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Can we say that again? Come on, you all help me raise that. I will bless. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, my soul. Oh, hallelujah. And oh. Come on and just magnify him in this place. Oh, hallelujah. Just bless him in this place. I know that there are times when we're going through seasons that can be really, really tough. And in those tough seasons, sometimes we don't necessarily feel like blessing God. Sometimes we don't necessarily, if we're honest, if we're honest, sometimes we don't feel like offering him a praise. And so this song declares that I will not allow a rock to cry out for me because God is going to be praised whether we praise him or not and so as as you think about all that he's done for you and perhaps the barrier that is in your way I encourage you to make a conscious decision to cry out to our king so with right now with the fruit of your lips let's just practice just practice just practice blessing the lord in this house just practice crying out to him father we bless your name father we magnify you god we praise you you're worthy god oh hallelujah you're king of kings and lord of lords god we bless you we magnify you we've come to praise your name We've come to lift you high, oh hallelujah, hey. I can't deny what you've done for me, loosed all my shackles and set me free, robed me and gave me the victory, I got a reason, a reason to praise. I can't forget what my eyes have seen, what seemed impossible I believe. Look at my life, we got history. I got a reason to rule the place. I won't let a rock cry out for me. I won't let a rock cry out for me. No, no. I'll never let a rock cry out. No, no. Come on, team. Can you say, I can't deny Boost all my shackles. I can't forget what my eyes see. What seems impossible. Look at my life. I got a reason. Say, I won't.
you see when we're saying, I'm not going to let a rock cry out. It means we're going to praise him at all times. In the good times and in the bad times. Right now, we're going through spiritual warfare. And we fight, we're going to praise him in the first quarter. We're going to praise him in the second quarter. We're going to praise him all the way in. Because you want to know why? We win. The Bible says in Isaiah 54 and 17 that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. It don't mean there won't be one. It don't mean they're gonna, but you know at the end that you're gonna make it and that it that you are gonna win. And that's why in the first quarter you lift up your hands. Because you know you're gonna win. And you're gonna go through it. Because as we learned last week, is that when we go through. We put on the whole armor of God. That's why we walk in the confidence of what God's plan and purpose is for us in our lives. So one more time, we gonna say, I won't. Oh, hallelujah, say, I won't. Let's pray. Lord God, we come today praising your name. Lord, I pray right now that everyone under the sound of my voice, Lord, that we do this all week long. The minute anything hits us, the minute anything happens, Lord, we cry out and we praise our way through it, Lord. We don't go through it alone. We go through it as a family. And we say thank you for blessing us. Lord, we pray that you strengthen our faith, and then we put on the whole armor of God, Lord. And we pray as we learn your word, Lord, that we grow and that we be the people you'd have us to be. Lord, right now, as we go through and you increase our faith, Lord, I pray over our discernment right now and everything that we do. And then, Lord, also, as we're going through and you strengthen our faith, Lord, we know that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. So let us keep walking in the path and the plan that you have for us, Lord. And we give you all the glory and all the honor in everything that we do. And we come thanking you and praising you all the way through it. And we love you and we thank you for blessing us, Lord, every day. Lord, we say this prayer in the name of Jesus. And all the blessed people of God said, amen. Can we give the Lord a hand of praise? Let's continue to praise him as you're, as you're taking your seat. And, and we enter into our offering time. It is our time we continue to worship the Lord. And then if we had a giving scripture today, I would use the same scripture of, of Isaiah 54 and 17. Is, and that's just an encouragement. Is that when we say that no weapon forms against us, that shall prosper, is that what it really means if you look at it is that we're going to succeed. And when you succeed, what you have to do is you have to keep walking forward in the plan, the purpose that God has for you. Amen? And then let's succeed together. Amen? And the Lord does it. As you're preparing your very best gift, if you need an envelope, just lift your hands and Usher will bring one to you. And then as you know, whenever we give, we always remember these three things, that we always put God first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God as righteous, the rest shall be added on to you. And then we're also, when we're giving, we're also cheerful givers. Just a quick question. Any cheerful givers in the house? Amen. And then God blesses us to be a blessing. And as you're preparing your very best gift, 
there are three ways in which you can give. The first is all of you are online, you can click it. Right now in the chat, there's a link that you can click on, or you can always go to our website at faithfulcentral.com. You click on the give button, there'll be an opportunity for you to tithe, bring back to God what he's blessed you with. Then there's offering, and then you can also do tithe and offering at the same time. The second way in which you can give is you can text it. Text the word GIVE to 833-321-3222. And the third way, I didn't say old school, but you can mail it to us or you can, or you can also drop it right off in the boxes. So our address is 333 West Florence Avenue, Inglewood, California, 90301. And as you see, there's giving receptacles that are right at the doors in the purple boxes. Amen. Let's lift our hands and let's pray over our offerings. Let's lift our hands. You know what? Let's lift both hands today. You want to know how we're both hands? Somebody say, I got, I, got, I got the victory. We lift in both hands today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the tangible gifts that you bless us with. We come into the house and we just say, thank you for blessing us, Lord. Let us be good stewards over what you blessed us with. The time that you bless us with every day are tender mercies. The talent, the skill that you give us, Lord. The temple, our bodies from the top of our head to the tips of our toes. Lord, and the treasure, our finances. Let what we do be pleasing in your sight, Lord. And Lord, open the doors for us. If there's anyone that's looking for a job, open the doors for us that are for us. Anyone in business, Lord, continue to bless us with opportunities and also clients. And let us be good stewards over the clients that you bless us with, Lord. And then, Lord, I pray for anyone that is retired right now, Lord, that they continue to receive the income that, that you have set up for them, Lord. And then, Lord, we thank you for all the blessings that you bless us with, seen and unseen. And we give you all the glory. And we say this prayer in the name of Jesus and all the blessed people of God said, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. And just know that I pray for you and we pray for you every day. We pray that God would open doors for you in the area of jobs, promotions, and new businesses. We call it job check. So far this year, this house has been blessed with over 236 new jobs and businesses. So if you got a job, you got a promotion, or you start a new business, and you haven't been counted so far this year, stand to your feet. It is job check time. If you got a job, you got a promotion, and you haven't been counted so far in the last few weeks, just stand to your feet. If you're joining us online, <laughs> if you're joining us online and you got a job, you got a promotion, you start a new business, just type in the chat. But 236, 237, 238, 239, 240, 241, 242, 243. You know your wife is excited. 244, 245, 246, 247. Holding a baby, 248. 249. You know what you know what number you are? Somebody say 250. You can't say it like that. You gotta say 250. 250, 251, 252. That whole corner got a job. Amen. How many know God is in the blessing business? Gotcha. So now I'd like to take a moment and acknowledge all of our guests slash new family members. If you're visiting with the family of champions and it's your first your second or your third time. Can you just wave at us or stand up, or you can stand, just wave at us. On behalf of Dr. John Paul Foster, the entire, and First Lady Carmen, the entire family of champions, keep waving. We wanna welcome you here today. This is a Bible-based, spirit-led, Christ-centered church. We pray that you learn something, you come back again and again. And by the way, when you come back, you're no longer a guest, now you are. Let's give all our new family members a hand. And if you're online, just type in the chat that you're new and there'll be someone in your city and someone will be there to greet you. Amen. So, hey, we have some announcements I want to share with you and I'd like for you to check them out. So I want you to look at a screen near you. Join Bishop Kenneth C. Ulmer and Kingdom Tours on a journey of discovery, heritage, and spiritual awakening. 
From October 12th, embark on a 10-day exposition to the heart of South Africa. Walk in the footsteps of heroes on a tour that takes you through the struggle and triumphs for freedom. Experience a cultural village that breathes the essence of South African heritage. Encounter the gentle giants at an elephant sanctuary in Hartby Sport. The journey continues to Cape Town with an unforgettable visit to Robben Island, a testament to resilience and hope, a World Heritage Site where Nelson Mandela was once held. This isn't just a trip, it's a pilgrimage to the soul of a nation, a chance to explore, reflect, and grow. For more information, simply click on the link in the chat, scan the QR code on the screen, or visit kingdomtours.africa. Your path to a life-changing experience awaits. Secure your place with us and witness the transformative power of South Africa. Praise the Lord, everybody. Y'all doing all right? Praise the Lord, everybody. Y'all doing all right this morning? Praise God. Praise Jesus. See, if, 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 have any, how many of you have been, been to South Africa? Praise God. That's, that's a good amount of people. Amen. How, how many want, a, want an opportunity to go to South Africa? Praise God. Listen to me. They're, they're, the, the QR code is on the screen kingdomtours.africa, but also our, our Ask Me uh, table in the, in the lobby, they'll be there uh, to give you more information about it. But listen, going to South Africa is one thing, but going to South Africa with the bishop, Kenneth C. Ohm, that's a whole different situation, family. Seriously. So if you want to get more information about it, um, please scan the QR code. There's more information about it in the lobby, but it will bless your life. It'll transform your life, um, and it'll be a blessing. Amen? I ask you all to pray for me, and I just want to say thank you in advance. I asked you to pray for me last week. I said the youth will be here and we're, you know, we want to have an opportunity to reach the community and to impact the youth. Well, I have an announcement to make. 996 <laughs> youth were in this building and in that parking lot having an amazing time. Y'all got to help me praise God. I said 900. Can I round it up to 1,000? Is that all right? Right? 1,000 young people came out on Friday night, and I promise you, I took pictures because I wanted to remember this with my own eyes. At the end of the service, there were, there were youth, young people right here, giving their lives and committing to Christ. I'm telling y'all, God is up to something. He's up to something. Uh, uh, the, the, the kids uh, first through, or K through five, were, were in the back. There weren't even, there, I don't even know if there's enough seats for the amount of youth that were back there. It was incredible what God is doing. Y'all to help me praise God. Thank you for your prayers. But it was phenomenal. And that's just our first one so far. And we have more to come throughout the summer. But thank you for your prayers. We are trying our absolute best to reach the community and impact the kingdom. Amen. And God is doing something unusual. So I just want to thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your commitment. And let's see what God continues to do. Amen. Amen. Now, if you are a student or if you have a child that is going to college or in college, we have our scholarship. And uh, somebody say Friday, Friday is the deadline. And I really want you to take advantage of these resources. Uh, Faithful Central Bible Church, we believe in education. We believe in pouring into the next generation. We also believe in helping those who want to continue school, go back to school, or even develop a trade. Okay, so if that's something that you want to do, do it now. You have uh, about six days, amen, to, to fill out the application. And I promise you, if you turn it on, in on Friday, it, we can call it a good Friday. Amen. <laughs> but you want to take advantage of these resources. We want to see you thrive and we want to be a part of your journey as God pushes you and moves you into the things that he's ordained for your life. OK, so if you want information about it, you can go to faithfulcentral.com. You can scan this QR code. But we do not want you, your children or grandchildren to miss out on an opportunity to be blessed. Amen. Amen. Now, I did promise you guys this. Um, that we would on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, 7 p.m. on Facebook and YouTube, we would begin to break down the armor of the full armor of God. That starts this Wednesday. This Wednesday, 7 p.m. on YouTube and Facebook, we'll begin to break down the full armor of God. All right. So we can be equipped uh, during spiritual warfare. Uh, speaking of spiritual warfare, uh, they came in their war clothes, y'all. So tell your neighbor, let's continue to worship.
fight. We will fight. And we will win. And we will win. Come on, we speak victory. We speak victory to every trial we're in. We are overcomers. We are overcomers. By the blood of the Lamb. By the blood of the Lamb. No longer defeated. No longer defeated. We're winners now. We're winners. Come on, put those hands together. Come on. It's a real simple song. Come on, say, we will fight. We will fight. Come on, and we will win. And we will win. We speak victory. We speak victory to every trial. To every trial we're in. Come on, say, we are overcomers. We are overcomers. By the blood of the Lamb. The of the Lamb. No, longer no longer defeated. Come on, we're winners now. We're winners.
shifts quickly, quickly. Not much longer now. Come on, things are about to shift quickly. quickly. Not much longer now. I don't know who that's for. Things are about to shift.
Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The devil is mad this morning. I'm telling you, he's mad. He, he didn't think we come here praising him. He didn't think we come here this morning lifting up the name of Jesus. He thought we came here to play around. We, we meant business when we came here this morning. Are there any praisers in the house today? Are there any praisers online? Does anybody realize that this means war and we've drawn a line and told the enemy we're not bowing down? Somebody help me praise God for the breakthrough that's already on the way. Somebody help me praise God for the breakthrough that's already taking place. Holy Spirit, move in this place today. Break chains, break shackles, and do it for your glory, God. Satan, you have no power. No power in our mind. No power in our families. No power in our careers. No power in our body. And no power over our mind. So we came this morning to pull down every stronghold and call it into obedience to Jesus Christ. We came to bring every thought captive into obedience to Jesus Christ. So right now, God, we ask that your spirit would move through this place and cyberspace so that your children would be set free. Break chains, break strongholds, break curses, break bondage, break false mindsets, destroy idols, destroy lies, destroy deception, destroy anything that isn't God. And Lord, we come this morning standing on your word, standing on your promises, declaring no matter what we face, we win in the mighty name of Jesus. If you've been blessed, help me praise him one last time. Lord, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Y'all can sit down. We, we had a, a, a cute, a really nice, really nice, really nice video for you. We just gonna go straight to it, amen? Those of you visiting for the first time, God bless you, wave at me real quick, just wave real quick. God bless you, thank you for being here. Thank you all for being here. God bless you. Can you help me praise God one last time for all the, the babies that were dedicated and all the families that are here? God bless you. God bless you all for being here today. Now, we're, we're in the middle of a series, so be careful. Um, we're dealing with addressing spiritual warfare. And, and I, don't know, I don't know about y'all. After I preached, every day, every single day, I've been under attack. But I know we win. And, and I, I know that the enemy does not want us to know what God's word says about his attacks. And so last week we learned, uh, we're in a series called This Means War. Last, last week it was suit up. And we learned the importance of putting on the full armor of God. And the word of God says, we put on the full armor of God, watch this, so we could withstand the schemes, the plans, the plots, the deception, the tricks of the enemy. Then we learn, listen, we don't war against flesh and blood. Flesh and blood, blood lied on you. Flesh and blood cussed you out. We don't war against flesh and blood. We realize that it's the enemy using other people against us. Suit up against every scheme, every trick of the enemy. Today, this means war strongholds this means war strongholds now if you have your bible if you want to go to second corinthians chapter 10 second corinthians chapter 10 if you read the the uh paul's letter to the church of corinth if you get to second corinthians chapter 10 you will notice paul has a very harsh tone in fact the way that paul is addressing the believers at corinth is intense and if, you, if, you, if you, some of your Bibles may even have it, Paul switches and he begins to address that his leadership, his ministry, or his apostleship has now been put into question. In fact, you would, he, he realized 
that he was being opposed, listen, not by people on the outside. Start the car. But by people on the inside. He, he realized that leaders had, had ra risen up and come up, and they were putting into question uh, Paul's leadership, Paul's ministry, Paul's authority, and his apostleship. And what they were doing is they were using arguments, lies, and tricks to drive them away from the apostle Paul. So they had to put his, they had to put his authority or apostleship into question so that they can put the church into question, ultimately to put the gospel into question to get them away from the church and the gospel so they can live in error. Are you with me? And so Paul, when Paul realizes this, He's defending his apostleship. And in fact, if you read the beginning of, 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 of chapter 10, verse 1 through 2, he says, um, um, I'm timid. He says, I pray that I don't have to be as bold in person as I am in this letter. But I've been gentle. I've been gracious. And, and, and so it seems as though you took my kindness for But my kindness wasn't weakness. My kindness was meekness. And he begins to use words in the original language that correlate with the ministry and life of Jesus Christ. And he says, I'm, 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 I'm coming, bringing the same love, the same grace, the same mercy that Jesus did. But now it seems as though some leaders amongst us have now risen up and put my authority, my apostleship, my, my leadership into question. And Paul says the way that they pay, pay attention, the way that they have done this is they have created arguments or thoughts that go contrary to what God has done and what God has said. And Paul says anytime someone does something like this, we must declare it spiritual warfare. This means war. Amen. And so Paul then begins to reveal to us that there are certain strongholds that the enemy wants to build amongst us believers. So the first thing that we learn from Paul is, in spiritual warfare, we must destroy strongholds. Uh -huh. Are you with me? Yes. In spiritual warfare, we as believers must destroy strongholds. You don't believe me? Go to verse 4. Verse 4 says this. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of this world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Watch verse 5. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. You still with me? And we take captive every thought. Not some of the thoughts. We take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. Now, here Paul is, he's using warfare language, right? Paul, Paul uses language describing a battlefield, strongholds, and weapons. You with me? How, this, this is slightly different. Now, now Paul is using battlefield, uh, uh, weapons, and stronghold language that symbolizes and articulates or, or, or metaphors for war. You with me? Now, what's interesting about this is Paul's using this language and as he's using this language, he is not speaking of a physical battleground. You with me? The battleground he's talking about that the devil has, has waged, raged war against. It is not a physical, material battleground that we must march towards. No, he reveals to us that there is a particular battlefield in which the enemy creates strongholds that are arguments and thoughts. So this, this particular battleground is not physical, it is mental. Are you with me? Because they're arguments and they are thoughts, cognitive, that buff themselves up, puff themselves up, and rise up against God, knowledge of God, and against obedience to Jesus Christ. You still with me? So Paul says to us that any time 
a stronghold has been built in a believer's mind, a believer must demolish them. Now, Paul is using the, the language stronghold over and over again. He uses the word demolish over and over again. So we need to know what a stronghold is. Are you with me? Now, if the word of God says that there are strongholds built and it is our job as believers to demolish or destroy the stronghold, I need to know what a stronghold is. Now, I want to reveal two strongholds to you based on, on 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Now, first, first, first I want to describe to you a physical stronghold. Then I'll explain to you a spiritual stronghold. You with me? All right. A physical stronghold, it is a military fortification. You with me? All right. The doctor's in the house. We're going to teach today. We done preached already. Stronghold, listen, it's, it's a military fortification. You with me? Now, a fortification is a military construction designed for defense of territories and warfare. Watch this. And used to establish rule in peace. Now, there are regions in which peace is made. All right? Now, what's interesting about a stronghold, historically, normally, a stronghold is a building or other structure that is a safe place. All right? It, it is a place that is safe from attack. So if you, if, if you were in war, you got to a stronghold, it would be a place of refuge. It would be a place of peace, a place that there wouldn't be attack. In fact, um, David can give us more insight in Psalm 9 and 9. This is what he says. The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in the times of trouble. Are you with me? Now, uh, 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 David reveals to us that, in fact, throughout his life, if you watch David's life, as he moved forward to be king to do the things that God called him to be, David actually hid in strongholds. In fact, when armies and enemies were attacking him, David actually hid in strongholds. And David, the same David who hides or who hid in a stronghold, reveals to you and I that God is actually a stronghold. He says, the Lord is my refuge, the Lord is my fortress, the Lord is my defense, the Lord is my strong place. In other words, if I'm being attacked by the enemy and I can get to the place where God is, the enemy cannot attack me. In fact, he says, if it, it does not matter if the enemy is attacking me, if I'm in a refuge or region or place that God is. Uh, let me see if I can try it this way. It, it does not matter if the enemy is after me. It doesn't matter if the enemy is attacking me if God's hand is on me. Because God's hand is a refuge, it's a stronghold. And I don't know anybody who can take me out of God's mighty right hand. So he reveals to us, God is a place, he's a stronghold. I don't know who's in here today. I don't know who's watching online right now. But no matter what wave comes, no matter what storms come, I got a testimony <laughs> that when the water rose and when the winds blew, when I found myself in the arms of God, it did not matter what storm came. It didn't matter what adversity came. It didn't matter what army came. It didn't matter what enemy came. As long as I was in the safety of God, my enemies could come, but they couldn't attack me because I was in the mighty, strong hand of God. A fortress, a stronghold is a fortress, physically, that you cannot attack. Here's my problem. Paul says, demolish the stronghold. But a stronghold normally is a place that was not being attacked or subject to attack. Now, if Paul is saying that we have strongholds, what type of stronghold is he referring to? I'm glad you asked. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 10 reveals to us something different that's going on spiritually. Are you with me? Now, a stronghold, this, this type of stronghold he's referring to is a stronghold that has been built when we accept and believe arguments and thoughts that go against knowledge of God. Say it one more time. Strongholds are built in our mind when you and I accept and believe arguments and knowledge that go against God. 
Try one more time over here. Anytime you and I believe the lie, the enemy is building a stronghold in our minds. What the enemy does, very crafty, is he, he creates arguments and thoughts that go against knowledge of God and goes against who we are and who we are in Jesus Christ to get us to go away from God. Now, if I can change the way you think, I can change the way that you act. The, the, the enemy knows this. If I can change your mindset, I can change your behavior. And so what the enemy does is he comes up against everything that God says we are and everything God says he is to get us to walk contrary to what the word of God says. Now, you don't believe me? Let's go to the garden. Genesis chapter 2. Adam and Eve. Watch this. This is very, this is very crafty. Genesis chapter 2 verse 17 says this. But you must not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Watch this. For when you eat from it, you will certainly die. Another translation says, when you eat from it, you will surely die. I'm read it one more time. Genesis 2, 17 says this. But you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you do eat from it, you will surely die. You will certainly die. That's what God says. Are you with me? Now let's watch what the, what the devil says. Go to chapter 3. Just go ahead and scroll or turn the page in your Bible. Watch Genesis 3 and 4. It says this. You will not surely die. <laughs> See how slick the enemy is? You will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman. Here, here's the argument. Go to verse 5. For God knows when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Are you with me? Now, here's the stronghold that was built in their mind. Now, verse 6 reveals to us that after she believed the devil's lie, after she believed an argument that went against what God said, after she ex ex accepted and did not take that thought captive, the words of God says that she now saw the tree in a different light. How did she see it? It was desirable, and it was pleasing to her eyes. And the word of God says, and then she ate from it and gave some of it to her husband. What am I saying? That the enemy could not get her to move outside of the will of God until he first formed an argument to get her to question what God said. He only got her to rebel when he got her to believe a lie. God said, if you eat from this tree, you will certainly die. The first words out of the enemy is, you will not surely die. You, you won't certainly die. You, you, you won't surely die. Because the enemy builds arguments, teases us, entices us, lies to us as if God is withholding something from us. And he uses that very thing to destroy us. And the word of God says uh, in, in, in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10 that when arguments that go against God or thoughts that go against God come, we must demolish them. Are you with me? He says we must de demolish them and take every thought captive. All right? Why? Here it is. If you read chapter, chapter 10, the word of God says arguments set themselves up against the knowledge of God. Sometimes our thoughts if we don't take them captive, cause us to walk in disobedience to God. Right? And that, that's, this, is when I, this is why I learned this. In spiritual warfare, we must destroy every argument that goes against God. One more time. In spiritual warfare, we must destroy not some of the arguments, every argument that goes against God. Now, if you read, go, go to verse 5. Verse 5 says this. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. Did you see that? We, we, one more time, one more time, one more time. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. Are you still with me? 
and we take captive every thought. Now, here, Paul says, since the enemy is building strongholds in our mind, we must demolish every lie that we've accepted. Say it one more time. Every lie that we have accepted that goes against God must be demolished. Are you with me? It, don't, don't, don't toy around with it. Don't, don't put it in the closet and close the door. Right? Paul says every argument that goes against who God is or who God says you are, you have to demolish it. Let me see if I can help you. Now, demolish. Catherine says this, to destroy completely. All right? To destroy completely by tearing down or dismantling. Are you with me? To destroy, to tear down destruction. That's what demolish means. Now, demolish means that if, if, the, if the enemy has placed this lie in my mind about me or about God, it is my job as a believer to destroy it completely, right? To tear it down, to dismantle it, to, to utter destruction on the lie. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. God told us to do a demolition, and we've done a renovation. God said, do a demolition, and we've done a renovation. Let me see if I can help you. Now, now anybody ever renovated your home? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah, renovation. Praise the Lord. Now, now, a renovation, right, is updating an existing structure. I'm going somewhere. A renovation is updating an existing structure, watch this, with cosmetic changes. I go, I go into this particular room, and I say to myself, what can I add to this room to dress it up? What can I add to this room to make it more, more appealing or more, or more pleasing to the eye? Here, 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 here's, now, the flip side. Now, a remodel is this. A remodel involves changing the structure. How do you change the structure? I change the, you preaching right here. Good Lord, have mercy. She said, you tear it down. Right? Now, Remodeling involves changing the structure through a demolition or construction. Now, watch this now. God said, dismantle, destroy, demolish the arguments. Some of us, now I got to look up. We've done a renovation. You haven't destroyed the lies of the enemy over your life. You've just dressed up the lie. Say it one more time. The enemy will make us keep the lie there and add some stuff around it. When God says, as believers, we must destroy every argument that the enemy places in our mind that goes against who God is and who God says that we are. Now, wh wh why am I worried about how I look if the Lord says I'm beautifully and wonderfully made? Why, do I always, why am I always afraid? When the word of God says, you, you, we shouldn't have a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Why, why am I always worried when the word of God, Jesus, Jesus himself says, be anxious for nothing? But, but there, there is something that the enemy does in our mind that makes us believe a lie that goes contrary to the character and the nature of God. And then we end up believing the lie and we live, listen, a limited life. Because I can't go as far as I want to go if I'm always afraid. I cannot go as far as I want to go if I'm always in fear. I cannot go as far as I want to go if every time I think about where God is trying to take me, I'm, I'm consumed with worry and fear. No, I have to shake off worry. I have to shake off fear and remind myself what God's word says about who I am and where I'm going. Am I preaching to anybody this morning? Because the enemy doesn't want you to get where he's taking you. Because he not only knows you will be blessed when you get there, but God has ordained people down the road that when you get there, God's going to use you to bless their life. And so their future depends on you shaking off fear, shaking off anxiety, and moving into everything that God has for you. I need at least four people to help me declare, I'm shaking off fear. I'm shaking off anxiety. I'm shaking off worry. I will only declare who God says I am and where God says I'm going. And the last time that I checked, he still had all power in his hand. 
listen to me. The reason why some of us have not even done what God told us to do is because we're still living in fear. The enemy, when he sees, I don't know who I'm talking to today. When the, 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 when the, the enemy knows what God has called you to do. And he knows that hell is in trouble when you do it. Listen to me. He knows how your light will shine and how he will use you to transform other people's lives when you say yes. And what he's done to you is he's allowed you to believe the lie that you're not usable, you've made too many mistakes. Ah, Lord, me, yes, you. First of all, everybody in the Bible besides Jesus was, was crazy. <laughs> uh, Moses was a murderer. Noah was a drunk. Do I got to keep going or you get the picture? David was an adulteress, a murderer, a liar, and everything. So if God can use them, I have to believe that God has the ability to use me. But, but what I have to declare is, Lord, that's who I used to be. I forget the things which are behind me, and I press forward to what lies ahead. It's, who am I talking to this morning? God has not forgotten you. God has not left you. But we have to stop believing the lie that has us stuck. But that, that's why he says, listen, I, in spiritual warfare, I must demolish every argument. He doesn't stop there. He says, demolish every argument. Then he switches and says, and every thought. Every thought. He says, I need to take every thought captive in obedience to Jesus. Are you with me? So spiritual warfare, we must destroy any thought. Any thought that goes against God. Are you with me? Now, go, to, go, to, go back to verse 5. Verse 5 says this. We take captive every thought and make it obedient to Jesus Christ. Right? Paul, he, listen, he reminds us that anything that the enemy has told us that goes contrary to the obedience of Jesus Christ, we have to take it captive. Are you with me? We must take it captive. Now, now take captive is a war term. Now, in war... It means to gain complete control over. In fact, it means once you've, once you've taken it captive, it is, it is the job of the captor to lead it away. Think about your mind. Now, once you know that the lie is here in your mind, it is, it is our job to take that thought captive and lead it away out of our mind, watch this, and make it a prisoner. Now, in those days, they would, they would take the person captive they would lead them away, and they would put them in prison, right? Now, think about the lie. Think, think about the thought that the enemy's placed in your mind. The Word of God says, I must take it captive. I must lead it away, and I must make it a prisoner that is obedient and subject to Jesus Christ. We, we, now, now, the mistake we've made sometimes is we have allowed the lie to stay there. We've acknowledged it, but we haven't dealt with it. We, we know that there is an argument or a thought that, that, that puffs itself up against God, but we're not doing anything about it. Paul says, you, if you let it stay there, it will grow and take over. It is our job as a believer to take it captive, lead it away, and make it a prisoner to Jesus Christ. It, it, it must be subject to what God's word says about who we are and who he is. And I've been praying all week that every single lie that the enemy has placed over you, every lie he has placed in your mind, every argument, every thought that goes against who I know you are in Jesus Christ and who the word of God says you are, I bind it now in the name of Jesus. I've been praying that every thought be called captive in obedience to Jesus Christ because I don't want to leave here today without you knowing who you are and me knowing who we are. Are you, are you with me? Now, 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 I know this for sure, that I am a child of God. You hear me? I am a child of God. I am redeemed from the hand of the enemy. This is what the Word of God says. I know that I am forgiven. I know that I am saved by grace through faith. I know that I am justified. I know that I am sanctified. I know that I am a new creature. I know that I am partaker of his divine nature. 
I know that I am redeemed by the curse of the law. I know that I am I'm delivered from the powers of darkness. I know that I am led by the spirit of God. I know that I am a son of God. I know that I am kept in safety. I know that I'm getting all of my needs met by Jesus. I know that I am casting all of my cares on Jesus. I know that I am strong in the Lord and power in his mighty hand. I know that I am doing all things through Christ who strengthens me. I know that I am an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus. I know that I'm heir to the blessings of Abraham. I know that I am observing and doing the Lord's commandments and the Lord's will. I know that I am blessed when I'm coming in and I'm blessed when I'm coming out. I know that I'm an heir of eternal life. I know that I am blessed with every spiritual blessing. I know that my body is healed by his stripes. I am exercising my authority over the enemy. I know that I am only above and not beneath. I know that I am more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. I know that I am establishing God's word here on earth. I know that I am overcoming by the blood of the lamb. Somebody help me preach. And the word of my testimony. I know that I am overcoming the devil. I know that I am not moved by what I see. I do know that I am walking by faith and not by sight. I know that I'm casting down every vain imagination. I know that I am bringing every thought captive to be obedient to Jesus Christ. I know that I'm being transformed by the renewing of my mind. I know that I am a laborer together with God. I know that I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And I do know that I am an imitator of Jesus Christ. I am the light of the world and I am blessing the Lord at all times and his praises will continually come out of my mouth. Do I have any praises in the house today? Because the devil tried to lie about who I am, but I know whose I am and I won't stop praising him because I'm bringing every thought captive to be obedient to Jesus Christ. Devil, you tried me on Monday. You tried me on Tuesday. You tried me on Wednesday. You tried me on Thursday. You sure enough tried me on Friday and you tried me yesterday. But I came early on Sunday morning to give God some praise because it doesn't matter what weapon was formed against me. I stand here this morning declaring it will not prosper. I cast down every lie in the mind of my brothers and sisters because I don't just know who I am. I know whose I am and he is the great I am. I am that I am because I will not be will be and I will be anything you need me to be. Somebody said he's Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Somebody said he's a lily in the valley. When I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil because God is with me. Do I have any praises in this house this morning? Because I know who I am and I came to rage war against the enemy and I came to declare you cannot have my mind. You cannot have my peace. You cannot have my joy. You cannot have my family. You cannot have my friends. You cannot have my faith. You cannot have my hope. You cannot have my dreams. You cannot have my visions. I came to declare war against the enemy because I will walk by faith and not by sight. And I've seen you in the future and you look a whole lot better than you do right now. Does anybody have any faith? Faith to praise him on Monday. Faith to praise him on Tuesday. Faith to praise him on Wednesday. Praise to praise him on Thursday. I will keep on praising God until I get my breakthrough. Now a breakthrough is when what God declared in heaven breaks through earth's sphere. 
Which means if I want my breakthrough, as long as I keep moving, the blessing that God has already ordained is on its way. So I must keep on moving. I watched Magic Johnson play basketball. And one of the greatest moves that Magic Johnson did was an alley-oop. Magic Johnson would not throw the ball where the player was. He would throw the ball where the player was going. And I have a sneaky suspicion and a holy hunch that if you keep on moving, God's gonna throw you an alley-oop. And as long as you get there, when you catch the blessing, give God some glory, but you gotta keep moving. Moving through pain and moving through sorrow and moving through tears and moving through hardship and moving through liars and moving through opposition. Because when I get to the blessing that God has for me, I'm gonna keep on giving him praise. I heard somebody say, Pastor JP, that sounds like an alley-oop blessing. Well, I came to declare there's a blessing that's on the way. Will you keep moving? Will you keep trusting? If you believe in God's ability, help me give God some praise. The devil tried, but he lost. Listen to me, if you're standing right now, if you're standing right now, and, and you know, you know, you have, I have, believed the lie. We're going to bind it, cast it, call it captive, demolish it right now in the name of Jesus. This right here is going to be a freedom zone. So if you know, listen to me, I'm going to tell you how the devil works. He lies to you when you're, when you're young. Listen to me. Some of us, he tried to destroy you when you were a kid. He did. He did. And, and the pain and the sorrow that you had to experience when you were younger was to make sure you would not be what he knew you'd be down the road that God ordained for your life. We're going to bind the lie, the abuse, everything right now and call it captive to Jesus Christ. If you be bold enough to meet me right here, we're going to call heaven down on the gates of hell. Right now, today, if that's you, if that's you, we're going to leave every lie, every argument, every thought captive to Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We leave in every lie, every argument, every thought. We're going to leave it right here in the name of Jesus. 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 Listen, if you are, if you are standing behind those coming down, do me need two favors. The first one is you pray and intercede. The second one is if, if it is not an emergency, Please do not leave because your brothers and sisters need you praying for them as they leave deceit, lies, traps, tricks of the enemy at the feet of Jesus Christ. We're in this together, family. The word of God says when one part of the body is hurting, the entire body is hurting. But we came today to tell hell no. God, I thank you for every person still coming in this place, in cyberspace, online right now, God. Lord, we're here. We are here, God, because our eyes are open. We're here, God, because we have ears to hear and eyes to see. Lord, some of us are here because we are, we are reconciling the pain that we've experienced. But God, we come here today to dismantle, to demolish, to destroy every lie, every argument, and every thought that has puffed itself up against God. Lord, we leave everything that is not of you 
and is not who your word says that we are, we leave it right here, God. We demolish it in the mighty name of Jesus. So God, right now, cover my brothers and sisters from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. God, I bind every attack, every scheme, every lie, every trick, every deceit of the enemy right now. We call it into obedience to Jesus Christ. God, we ask right now, Lord, that you would break every chain in the mighty name of Jesus. Your word declares that the gates of hell will not prevail against us. And so, God, we stand on your word. Now, God, I ask that you would raise up a spirit of boldness, a spirit of courage that would allow each and every person here and online to demolish the lies of the enemy and stand in the truth of your word. Now, God, allow us to walk in freedom as the chains of bondage are falling right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Help us, God, to believe what your word says about you and about who we are. And God, we ask right now that the Holy Spirit, your spirit, will remind us of everything your word has taught us about who we are and whose we are. Now, God, for my brothers and sisters who have gone through pain and trauma because of this lie, we ask right now, God, for mental peace. We ask, God, that you will give them peace that this world cannot give them. Peace that only comes from Jesus. God, we ask that as we leave and submit our prayer petition to you, that you would allow the peace that transcends, the peace that surpasses all understanding, allow it to guard our hearts and our minds in you. God, I ask right now that a spirit of peace be upon each and every person here. I ask God that a weight would be lifted from every single person who has come down in the mighty name of Jesus. I ask God that there would be a new season of freedom and boldness and courage as we move forward into everything you have ordained for our lives. Lord, we say this prayer in the mighty, matchless name of Jesus Christ, declaring that we win and we have victory in Jesus' name, help me praise God. Help me say amen and amen. 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 There, there's freedom. There is, there is freedom in here. There's freedom in here. Listen to me. I want everybody to stand for a moment. Please listen to me. Everybody stand. Our ministers, our, our ministers and pastors are going to be right here after the service. If you still need to pray, on your own or with a pastor or a minister, we will, we will be here to pray with you. Listen to me. I, I know why I've been attacked. I'm not, I've been attacked every single, every single day, even between these services. You can ask my team. Between the services, the enemy didn't want me to preach today, but we served him notice. We served him notice. We served him notice. And so, listen to me. Don't allow the enemy to bring guilt and shame. Leave it, leave it, it's go demolish it. Demolish all of it as we move forward to be everything that God has called us to be. God, as we leave this place today, allow your hand to cover us and protect us. Allow your spirit, the Holy Spirit, to empower us to live this life of faith. Allow your word to be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path so that we can live according to your will, your word, and your ways. Lord, allow your light to shine through us so great that when people see our good works, they will glorify you, our Father in heaven. We say this prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Family, I love you. Freedom in the name of Jesus. God bless you. See you next week.